Welcome back to the Webbing O'Neill channel, Manchester United versus Arsenal preview. We're back on the building site, which is taking shape nicely, just like Manchester United's recent results. Three wins on the trot, back-to-back -back clean sheets, but Tony, we're facing an Arsenal side. Five wins on the bounce. Are you confident going into this one? Yeah, I am confident because Arsenal, uh, in good form, young team, energetic, they're going for it. And it's, it'll be typical Arsenal, overconfident, think the great side and all that, but they're not. Man United, 2004-2005 season, smashed the Invincibles at Old Trafford. And ever since then, Arsenal have always thought they're going to do it. Well, they're not. They're coming here as clear favourites. If you look back a couple of weeks ago, it looked as though Manchester United was going to implode after the Brentford game. And since then, they've put a run of three games and been excellent. They've turned it round. Ten Hag's got the players playing. He's brought in the players. And to be honest, I love it when it's like this. I really, really do. Because if there's one thing I can't stand, it's Arsenal fans. They have <laughs> constant... No, no, it's true. They have constantly <laughs> abused every manager. It was only a few months ago. It was Arteta out, Arteta out. Now look at them. They're coming here full of confidence, giving it the big in. Well, I'm telling you, this is Manchester United. And I'll tell you something. United will get a result against them because they've turned it round. The way they're performing and looking and playing for each other, I'm amazed really. In such a short time, this club is getting back on its feet. It won't be a bed of roses going forward, but against Arsenal, we will raise it. You've seen it at Old Trafford against Liverpool. We raised it. Mm. Two away games are completely different. We got the results, what we wanted, but we're at home and I'm telling you, Everything's looking rosy for Man United against Arsenal. We're going to do it. Well, if you can't already tell, Tony's definitely confident of getting the three points. The big talking point as well, Tony, is he going to go for the fourth game in the row with the same starting eleven? I can't see that happening, to be honest with you. Uh, I think there's one or two players. It needs freshening up. Any team, no matter how good they are, it needs freshening up. And I think with the signing of Anthony, he may start him, he may put him on the bench, but that front three and maybe one in the midfield, there may be a change in there, but that back four stays as it is, absolutely working fantastic together. He has mentioned he doesn't know when Anthony Martial is going to be back. Uh, Luke Shaw, Juan Pesaka, he said had small complaints, I think he said, before the Leicester game, which... I'm not Don't. too sure how he can get injured, sat on the bench, you know, like they did against Southampton. But, you know, that's a new one for me. But with Martial, you know, out injured again. Yeah. You know, it's looking a little bit more thinner up top. So, obviously, you've mentioned in your pre, well, your post-match and your preview, you want to see Ronaldo starting in these games. Yeah, I do want Ronaldo to start. I think I think to start the game, we need we need someone up top where, where we can get ping the balls to. We mm. need someone there and we've not had it. Uh, with, the, with the strike force, what's been out there the last two away games, it's not been there. We're not getting the players running round the back and pinging it into the middle to a striker, a target man. And I think Ronaldo, if he's there for the first half, I think he'll do an excellent job. We need a target man early on to stop them. Do you think Ten Hag's already maybe quietened a lot of the doubters out there on his managerial expertise. You know, he's come in them first two games, Tony, were horrendous, you know, especially the Brentford game. But he's gone back to basics, making sure we've got a solid defence, a solid spine of the team. We've still got Casemiro to add in the mix in that midfield. He's not come here to sit on the bench. I think what you've got to do with Ten Hag, and it's not just Ten Hag, it's the backroom staff and everything, you have to give these people 100% credit. And as I said earlier on, it looked as though we was going to implode. These people have done a tremendous job in such a short space of time that going forward for the next year, I've every confidence in him that the following season, once we've got some more players in in the summer, we will go on and possibly make some challenges quicker than I actually thought. What Ten Hag's done to me is nothing short of a miracle at this moment. In this rebuild, it's going to be another two or three summer transfer windows in my eyes to get the actual team and an identity that he wants. Yeah. But, you know, coming back off them two defeats that, that we've just mentioned. Brighton you know, got, and, uh, Yeah, he's gone back to basics. He's made some big calls there, dropping Harry Maguire to the bench, Luke Shaw. Yeah. You know, even Ronaldo is putting on the bench, so he doesn't yeah. care about status among the squad. No. Outside of football, whatever you've got going on on social media. And to me, it just shows you that he's his own man. You know, there's, there's no cause of him being a puppet for the board, the Glazers, all that sort of stuff. He's his own man 
And I'm quietly confident that we're going to get things done under this manager. It's a clear out. It's a clear out. Um, You know, we've Mm -hmm. mentioned McLaren in the past. This team needs a clear out. It needs a complete Mm -hmm. change. The whole... The old back room, everything about the players' attitudes, the, what, what they're doing and everything. But against Arsenal, we've got players what have been signed mm. and we've got players now hungry. And I think they'll take it to Arsenal and I think they'll do it. And I, to, to be honest with you, I think they'll give Arsenal a lesson, right, in fight and show what it's about. I've watched a couple of games. I like to watch a couple of games beforehand. And I watched that 2004-2005 game, the year after the Invincibles. We broke their record. And I'm telling you, United know how to fight when it comes to Arsenal. Arsenal, they've got a weak spot at Old Trafford throughout the years. Yes, they've had some results, but not too many. And I think they're going to come here overconfident. This team is actually flying. The confidence, everything about it, they all know what they're doing. Yeah, hopefully you mean fight on the pitch and not off the pitch, Sona. But um, yeah, with Christian Eriksen as well, I think I've been shocked actually with uh, Eriksen uh, in the way he's come in. I think he's actually been brilliant. I've probably not given him enough praise that I, sh- I should have done mm. over these last uh, couple of post-match uh, reactions. And I-, I see him as key in that Manchester United midfield now. He c- he's clearly shown that he yeah. can work in a two in midfield. He's got the energy to get up and down, defensive and in attack, to combine up top with the forwards. Him and Casemiro for me well, going forward. And this is a game, really, you want your big, big players to be in there, your experienced players. And Casemiro, for me, fits the bill going in there yeah, on Sunday. Yeah, he, he, he fits the bill. I mentioned in the aftermatch against Leicester about Ericsson, the one thing what's missing, right, is his passing to a target man, putting them balls through into the penalty box. That's what's missing from Ericsson's game. But that's not his fault. Mm. His game is doing that ball and he's got it in his locker and that's why I go for Ronaldo in the team. He needs a target man to improve his game and he has played really well, settled that midfield down and they all look mm. for him for the ball yeah. and it's it, it's actually improved Bruno's game where he's getting in space. Yeah, I, I must say, uh, especially with the Leicester game, you know, with Scott McTominay at Leicester, I did think he had a, a presence in that midfield but I'm just slightly concerned with some of the silly fouls that he does give away, you know, later on in the games, yeah. you know, against this Arsenal side, who have got good movement, good energy, you know, with Martinelli, Jesus, who might be dropping a little bit deeper, you know, he might struggle against him. And it's, for me, it's a game with Arsenal there, high on confidence, five wins in a row. We need that old Edin Casemiro to be in there because he looks cool, composed. And, and when he's got that ball at his feet, so in some of the passes he was doing out of tight areas, yeah. come on against but, Leicester. But this is, this, this is a different game for all the players now. Mm. This is a fast game. This is energetic. And United have got to step up. They've got to step up that energy, that running and that commitment. And to me, I think the low has got big problems here if he is not on his game because Martinelli will come flying at him and he's got to be on it. So this is a big challenge for Delo. And I think along there, I'm glad that Varane will be alongside him. Varane has been outstanding. He is the player we thought he was yeah. and it's now shining. Yeah. But I think that's where the problems may come from. But our players, Delo and Varane, they have to step it up there. That's the danger I see. I think Saka on the other wing, Malasia will have him and Saka's not scoring. He just doesn't seem to have it at the moment. That's the problems where I see Arsenal coming at United and I, I'm hoping Delo raises his game with Varane right behind him. Yeah, with, with Delo, we've seen over the last two or three games, he he's definitely upped his levels with the rest yes. of the players and you, you've got to give him credit for that. I, I still believe we need to strengthen in the right-back area when we can, whether that's in January or the, the summer transfer window next year. But I think on, on that side, with you saying he's going to struggle, it'll be key with Alanga in my eyes. He will start and I think he will start just purely based on his energy to get up and down that wing and to help Delo out when uh, Arsenal have got the ball. I think, I think I think what you've got with Delo, yeah. right? I think you've got Delo working in tandem with that back four now, mm. right? So I think his confidence has risen and he's, he's, he's what you call a steady Eddie at the moment, yeah. right? Will he improve? Only time will tell with this team and with the additions what's coming. But for now, I'm over the moon. I like what I see. I'm going into the game against Arsenal. I'm telling you, 3 0. I would love Anthony to 3 0. 3 0. Good shout. I'd love Anthony to start, but I think it might be too soon for him might to be. start. Might be. I, I expect him to be on the bench, though. 
maybe come on with a bit of a cameo performance yeah. with a good 20 minutes to go. Well, we've given our opinion, mm. Kieran. We've not listened to the media. We've not listened to Ten When do we ever listen to the media? That's, that's <laughs> how we're doing it for this <laughs> Arsenal game. So I'm full of confidence. And like I said, Kieran, I actually believe we can win this 3-0. 3-0? Let me know your yeah. prediction. I'm a, um, I'm a mad. I don't think so. I think they'll overcommit and the overconfidence what Arsenal have got coming into this game will leave themselves wide open. Do you know what? To be honest with you, you actually said 2-1 for the Liverpool game. Yes, I did. 2-1 it ended. Yeah. So I'm going to stick with you then on this one actually Come for the first on. time. Come Let's on. go 3-0 Arsenal. Well, 3-0 to Man United yeah, beating yeah, Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that doesn't happen now the way around. There but you go. That's what we're going with. Let us know what you're going with in the comments below. After the Team match. selection, um, result, all that good stuff. Yeah, after the match, I think you all know that Tony will be doing his match reaction. Webb is back with us after the game as well. So tune in. We'll be doing two post-match reactions yes. or match reactions, however you want to call it. Yeah. We're buzzing, looking forward to the game. Let us know how you feel. Smash a like on the video if you like our content. Subscribe if you want to support the channel and press that notification bell because Tony and Webber will be back straight after the game. See you there.